Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and today we're going to do a software tutorial and we're going to look at the software of choice for design of experiments called DOE Pro. Hope you enjoy. Okay, uh, tutorial number two here for Sigma Zone, DOE Pro. Um, we're going to show you, I'm going to show you how to analyze the L12 how to analyze a screening DOE. Now here I have the DOE complete, I have the data. For those of you that have sat in one of my classes, this is one of the, um, the case studies that you do during the class. It's the control of a hydraulic hammer. The measurement here uh, in the yellow fields is millimeters. And what we're doing is we're punching a rivet into a surface we would like to get the rivet to go flush to the surface uh, and we're measuring millimeters. So if you see a positive number, that's uh, how proud, how high the rivet is above the original surface. If you see minus numbers, we've actually punched the rivet below the original surface. So we're measuring, we're measuring millimeters and the, uh, the measure's called error. That's the way they've that's the way they've described it uh, we have six variables at two levels hydraulic pressure river density surface temperature hammer friction hammer type fluid type and we're going to analyze this doe now before we do any formal analysis a great thing to do is to just take a look at the yellow fields and ask yourself a very simple question has my process been anywhere You've just pulled on six of the, the most influential variables in your system. In theory, what you should have done is bullied the process. You should have pushed the result around. This is what a designed experiment is, is supposed to do. It's very different from normal one factor at a time testing, where you're just trying to hit a very specific target. This is trying to generate process knowledge and therefore what we want to do is to bully the process, push it around. So look here, let's take a look at row one. Row one says we're up at 120. Then the next row down, look, we've immediately gone into the 40s and we're nicely consistently in the 40s. Then the next row, we're back in the hundreds. Eventually we come into negative numbers here. So we've gone below the surface. Um, and we, we've hit all, all sorts of different, all sorts of different numbers. So we've pushed the process around. The other thing you also want to check for is uh, typing errors. It's very easy to put a typing error in. That would be especially true if you're measuring fractions of a millimeter, fractions of an inch. So if this was uh, thousandths of an inch, for instance, and you were putting point oh oh. 1.005.007 .007 in the table it would be very easy to, to put one extra zero or one less zero and it not really be noticed because of the way a doe works all 48 data points there's 48 data points in this test here all 48 data points are live for every analysis therefore one mistake one error is going to just go through every analysis that you do and it's going to affect everything so you've got to get this right you've got to do the tests correctly you've got to be disciplined in doing that and then you've got to type it in the yellow fields correctly so a typo can can waste an awful lot of time so make sure the date is right make sure that um make sure that the process has been somewhere now what we're going to do is we're going to go sigma zone so here we go sigma zone analyze design and the first tool we're always going to use is the marginal means plot. So whether you do a modeling DOE or a screening DOE like this one, then start with the graphs and we're going to do marginal means plot first. Click on that. And it says, what would you like? Y hat, S hat or both? I would like both, please. And then it draws these two diagrams. So we now have two marginal means plots. One that affects the spread, the consistency of the data. One that affects the target, the signal 
of the data. So the Y hat is checking the signal. The S hat is checking the noise. Now what we're going to do, whenever you do this, it always lands on S uh, at the end. So it always leaves us on the S graph. That's great because what we're going to do is we're always going to look at S first. And what you're trying to do typically to standard deviation is you're trying to minimize it. We're trying to make it as small as we reasonably can. We're trying to make the process as consistent as we can reasonably, reasonably make it. So what you're looking for is long lines on these graphs. The longer the line, the stronger the influence on the response that we've looked at. So in this case, nice long line in blue. What's that called? It's called river density. So the river density is the most influential variable for controlling the consistency, the standard deviation of the process. And of course, what we're always trying to do is minimize it. So we always want to be at the bottom end of this graph. The scale up the side is whatever you were measuring, and we were measuring millimeters. The scale across the bottom is where you set that particular variable. So river density went from 100 to 120 in this case. So you can see that. Um, and what we want to be is at the bottom end of this blue line so that standard deviation is at the minimum. And to achieve that, we are going to have to fix river density to 100. Now, once you've made that decision, when we apply this to the process, you have to go to the process, dial 100 in, then take a hammer and smash the knob off this setting. This setting is never to be moved again. This is now a fixed setting. Now, of course, before we do that, we just want to check, will that affect our ability to hit the target? So if I look at the ability to move targets around, because obviously customers ask for lots of different targets, if I lock the river density, will it affect my ability to hit the target? No, it won't, because the, the hydraulic pressure and the fluid type drive that particular result. So I can now fix river density to 100. There is my S hat strategy decided. Now I'll go to Y hat. Now because this is a screening DOE, all we are basically trying to do is we are trying to separate the vital few from the trivial many. So you are looking for the biggest signals that will bully the process and make it land where you would want it to land. Now, typically, you're trying to identify five or less variables to do this because you are going to do a modeling experiment with the variables that you choose. And modeling experiments are possible with two variables, three variables, four or five variables. Above five, we typically move into screening DOEs, and that's what this one is, an L12 screening DOE. In this case, I'm going to pick three variables. I'm going to pick the, the two big signals, the first one and the last one, and I'm going to pick this fairly large signal here that's coming from hammer type. So I'm going to pick those three signals. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fix river density to 100 to squeeze out the standard deviation. I'm going to decide what to do with these two in the middle, surface temperature and hammer friction. I'm going to fix those. Yeah, so normally you'd want to fix those to the cheapest. That would be a very common decision. And then what I'm going to do is set, set up a second experiment with this variable, this variable, and this variable, and the other three locked off and fixed while the experiment is going on. And that's typically what a screening DOE does. It just simply separates the vital few variables from the trivial many. And what we would basically be doing, if I go to Sigma Zone, create design, and go to computer aided, what we're basically doing, look, is when we're screening with the L12, we are down here with the higher numbers of variables. We are just trying to reduce those number of variables so that we can get on the top of the menu and we can model and predict where the result is going to land.
That is the analysis. That is the analysis with the Taguchi L12. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that case study uh, and that explanation of uh, design of experiments in that particular case, of course. Of course, one of the things that you may be saying, looking at the video, looking at the case study, I don't run an injection molding machine. I don't run any machinery at all. Uh, I design websites. What is design of experiments? What can design of experiments offer me? Because it's not a technical manufacturing process like a molding machine. Well, let's just take a look at an example of something like designing a website. You have your process, of course. Here we go. Website design. All you need to do is identify the features that you can change, which are the equivalent of adjustments. So adjusting temperature, you're not going to adjust the temperature on a website, clearly. But you are going to adjust the color that you choose. So let's just take some things that you can, you can change. I could change the color of the website. I could choose the font that I'm going to put for my heading and all the text on the page. Um, I could choose go font size. We could go, uh, let's have a look, static versus, I'm not sure what the phrase might be, but some of these websites, when you log into them, they're all kind of moving around. They're not just static anymore. There's that a little bit more that a little bit more interesting, aren't they? Um, what else could you do here? Um, there could be something about um, the, the, the style of the page. So maybe the menu position. Do you put it at the top? Do you put it down the side? Do you make it appear when people hover over the top? All sorts of different, uh, all sorts of different choices. Now, I've just identified five variables there. I am not a website designer, so I'm just trying to think of things that you might put into your website design. What would you be interested in? You might be interested in the click-through rate. You might be interested in the purchasing rate. Something that interests me is the speed, I suppose. Technically, what would that be? The refresh rate, maybe. Let's be, let's be a little bit IT about this, is it? Maybe the refresh rate. And again, how do you decide this? If you're going to design a web page, how the hell do you decide the best web page for the best purchasing rate? You have too many choices here to just guess. If you use a technique, the technique, design of experiments, what is this technique? It is always it's the fastest way it's the fastest way to find out and if you happen to be in the world of new technology in the world of innovation and you don't have standard knowledge of how a particular process functions you don't have 25 years of experience because you've just invented something brand new. You are at the cutting edge of the technology. How do you get process knowledge? DOE, design of experiments. It's the fastest way to find out. It is the fastest way to create new process knowledge. And to be honest, it will give you the capability to smash your competition. Design of experiments the fastest way to find out.